Good evening. This is Facebook Love number 312. Uh, spring is still taking its time, but I keep feeling there are hints, which is great. Uh, we continue to move the videos to YouTube. We are at, I think, 260 or something. Uh, so 312, we're getting there. Uh, the goal is by the end of this month, everything will be current. And from that point forward, I'll be putting them up as often as I do them in that spot. Uh, so I'm glad to be here to share a few poems today. Spring always makes me um, pretty sentimental. And also I fall in love with nature over and over again. Uh, and also working on my book, which has a, a very big like conservancy story as part of the plot. Um, I'm reading about trees and forests and um, how trees communicate, etc. And it's just, um, it's giving me a real sense of wonder. So uh, I have a poem that came across my desk this past several days. Um, which I love, and then I found a new one in this book, Poetry Unbound, which I shared from uh, last week, backwards, but you can see Poetry Unbound, even though it's backwards. Um, so I'll share one from this book as well. So the first is Mary Oliver's Sleeping in the Forest. I thought the earth remembered me. She took me back so tenderly, arranging her dark skirts, her pockets full of lichens and seeds. I slept as never before, a stone on the riverbed, nothing between me and the white fire of the stars but my thoughts. And they floated light as moths among the branches of the perfect trees. All night, I heard the small kingdoms breathing around me, the insects and the birds who do their work in the darkness. All night, I rose and fell as if in water, grappling with a luminous doom. By morning, I had vanished at least a dozen times into something better. Sleeping in the Forest from Mary Oliver. I go back to her a lot. I suppose if you come here, you notice that. Um, but I think she's a national treasure, so hopefully you don't mind. Uh, okay, so this poem is a little longer. The author's name is Dilruma I said that badly. Dilruba Ahmed. It's titled Phase One. For leaving the fridge open last night, I forgive you. For conjuring white curtains instead of living your life. For the seedlings that wilt now in tiny pots, I forgive you. For saying no first, but yes as an afterthought. I forgive you for hideous visions after childbirth, brought on by loss of sleep, and when the baby woke repeatedly, for your silent rebuke in the dark. What's your beef? I forgive you for letting vines overtake the garden, for fearing your own propensity to love, for losing again your bag en route from San Francisco, for the equally heedless drive back on the caffeine-fueled return. I forgive you for leaving windows open in rain and soaking library books again, for putting forth only revisions of yourself with punctuation worked over instead of the disordered truth. I forgive you for singing mostly when the shower drowns your voice for so admiring the drummer, you failed to hear the drum. In forgotten tin cans, may forgiveness gather, pooling in gutters, 
gushing from pipes. A great steady rain of olives from branches, relieved of cruelty and petty meanness. With it, a flurry of wings, 13 gray pigeons, ointment reserved for healers and prophets. I forgive you. I forgive you for feeling awkward and nervous without reason, for bearing Keith's empty vessel with such calm, you worried you had perhaps no moral center at all, for treating your mother with contempt when she deserved compassion. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you for growing a capacity for love that is great but matched only perhaps by your loneliness, for being unstable to forgive yourself, for being unable to forgive yourself first so you could then forgive others and at last find a way to become the love that you want in this world. Phase one by Dilruba Ahmed. I actually think misspeaking unstable instead of unable gave a extra meaning. So sometimes our mistakes when you're reading about forgiveness remind you that mistakes lead to something else. I have suffered from perfectionism most of my life and it's only now that I'm in my 50s that I'm figuring out that my mistakes take me places that doing things right the first time never did. My mistakes take me where I need to go to grow. So springtime, the woods, trees, and forgiveness. This is Facebook Love. I'll see you again.